Welcome to worship here at Lima United Methodist Church on this third Sunday of Easter. As we prepare our hearts and our minds for a time of worship, let us listen to the words of Psalm 100 from the translation, The Message. Hear these words. On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourself into his presence. Know this, God is God. He made us, we didn't make him. We are his people, his well-tended sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home. Talking praise, thank him and worship him. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and forever. Let us worship this Lord of love. Hi, my name's Frank Bartkowski. And I'm not. And welcome to Holy Humor Sunday. We thought it would be a good idea if this Sunday we could all have a few laughs, much like we did last year when a lot of people got up, they told some jokes, and despite all that, we decided to do it again. We would like to thank the people that presented jokes or sent them in to the Lima Jokes email account. Uh, Terry Bedakis, Philly, uh, Phoebe Ellison, Dory Newcomer, Phil Newcomer, Sandy Fagley, Mike Smith, Nancy Driscoll, Robin Myers, Janet Hess, and Frank Bartkowski. None of these names will be attached to any specific joke to protect the innocent. First joke. A Christian named Bill saw an ad online for a Christian horse, so he was intrigued and went out to check it out. It's easy to ride him, said the owner. Just say praise the Lord to make him go, and amen to make him stop. So Bill got on the horse and said, praise the Lord. Sure enough, the horse started to walk. Praise the Lord, he said again, and the horse began to trot. Praise the Lord, he yelled a third time, and the horse broke into a gallop. Bill was enjoying the ride so much, he almost didn't notice that he and the horse were about to go off the end of a cliff. When he realized it, he yelled out as loud as he could, Amen! And the horse stopped right on the edge of the cliff. And he wiped his brow and Bill said, Praise the Lord. It's never too late for Easter jokes. Why did the Easter egg hide? It was a little chicken. Why should you never tell an Easter egg a joke? It might crack up. What did one Easter egg say to the other Easter egg? Heard any good yolks lately? What do you call an Easter egg from outer space? An extraterrestrial. Why did the coffee call the police? because he had been mugged. So a rabbi, a Hindu, and a lawyer are in a car that breaks down. And the farmer tells him, I only have two beds available, so somebody's gonna have to sleep in the barn. Well, the Hindu says, no problem. I will sleep in the barn. I can handle this. And he goes out to the barn. A few minutes later, he comes back into the house and says, I cannot sleep in the barn. It's against my beliefs to sleep in the same building as a cow. The rabbi says, okay, I'll go, I'll go. And he goes out to the barn. A couple minutes later, he comes back in and says, I'm sorry, my beliefs tell me that I cannot sleep in the same building as a pig and there's a pig out there. I'm sorry, I can't do it. The lawyer says, all right, all right, I'll go. So the lawyer goes out and he goes into the barn, and a few minutes later, there's a knock at the door. They open the door, and it's the cow and the pig. Knock, knock, Jones. Need your help. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ether. Ether who? Ether Bunny. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dewey. Dewey who? Do we have to listen to any more Ether Bunny jokes? Knock, knock. Who's there? Anna. Anna who? And another ether bunny. Knock, knock. Who's there? Consumption. Consumption. Who? Consumption be done about all these ether bunnies. Knock, knock. Who's there? One. One who? One more ether bunny. Knock, knock. Who's there? Sherwood. Sherwood. 
Sherwood who? Sure would like to see yet another Ether Bunny. Knock, knock. Who's there? Justin. Justin who? Just another Ether Bunny. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cargo. Cargo who? Cargo beep beep. Almost ran over all the Ether Bunnies. Knock, knock. Who's there? Samoa. Samoa who? Samoa Ether Bunnies. Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orangey glad we ran out of Ether Bunny jokes. Here's a story about dead penguins to lift your spirits. Did you ever wonder why there are no dead penguins on the ice in Antarctica? Where do they all go? Well, wonder no more. It is a known fact that the penguin is a very ritualistic bird and lives an extremely ordered and complex life. Penguins are extremely committed to their family and will mate for life as well as maintain a form of compassionate contact with their offspring throughout the remainder of their lives. If a penguin is found dead on the ice surface, other members of the family and their social circle have been known to dig holes in the ice using only their vestigial wings and beaks until the hole is deep enough for the dead bird to be rolled into and buried. After packing the ice back in the hole, the male penguins then gather in a circle around the grave and they sing. Freeze a jolly good fellow, freeze a jolly good fellow. Okay, here's another one. I'm hoping this virus gets cleared up before tick season or else we'll be having Corona with Lyme. Why don't koalas count as bears? because they don't have the right qualifications. A grasshopper sits down at a bar. The bartender says, you know, we have a drink named after you. The grasshopper replies, who names a drink Steve? Why is no one friends with Dracula? Because he's a pain in the neck. So, what is the difference between Dubai and Abu Dhabi in India. Well, the people in Dubai don't like the Flintstones, but the people in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I hope you had a couple of laughs and look forward to Holy Humor Sunday next year. Take care. <laughs>
will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once, were, <clears throat> once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Greetings. My name is Karen Bartkowski, and I'm the associate pastor at Lima United Methodist Church. And I'm really excited today to be with you as we continue our journey through 1 Peter. We began our journey on Easter Sunday um, as we celebrated the resurrection and we reaffirmed that we have hope because we have hope in Jesus Christ. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in us today. And last week, we looked at to whom Peter was writing his letter. We learned that he was writing to people with an intermittent persecution. Sometimes things were okay sometimes bearable, and sometimes they were just downright awful. In many instances, that looks like our circumstances today. Peter emphasized the need for these folks to practice intentional hope. And by the way, if you've missed any sermons or just want to listen to them again, you can find them on our website, www.limachurchpa.com, under the online worship tab. So, Peter's writing to people who are feeling pretty lousy, <laughs> people who are feeling isolated and frustrated, scared and anxious, but he really wanted them to have some encouragement, some affirmation. He wanted them to be able to see beyond their current circumstances to something, some place and someone that was more permanent and more life-giving. I have hope that we can feel comforted and inspired as we read those same words. In chapter 2, verse 4 from our reading today, Peter calls us living stones who are built into a spiritual house. Peter goes on to talk about the cornerstone and the process of building. Now, my do-it-yourself skills are not too bad, especially if I can find a YouTube channel or call my dad, um, but I don't know anything about building a house. <laughs> so I did a little bit of research. Now, the first step in building a house is the, a house that's made of stone is finding the cornerstone. The cornerstone was the first stone that was laid into place. All the other stones would be set in reference to this stone. The entire position of the rest of the building was determined by this cornerstone. Today, sometimes we see a ceremonial cornerstone um, where the date of the construction or the dedication of the building would be displayed. However, in Peter's time, the cornerstone of the building was likely unseen but its impact was vital. The cornerstone was the foundation of the entire structure. If the cornerstone was unstable, weak, or defective, the entire structure was at risk. But a structure built on a solid cornerstone was solid, sound, and stable. It could withstand weather and storms and the test of time. One built on a weak cornerstone would be crumbled and destroyed. Anyone else singing the song, the wise man built his house upon the rock? <laughs> I'll let that be an earworm for you later. So back to Peter's words. For sure, Jesus is the living stone, is the living cornerstone. Peter quotes scripture from Isaiah where he calls Jesus the cornerstone. 
Isaiah prophesied that the stone would be rejected by the builders, but that God would use the cornerstone for his house. Jesus would be rejected by the religious leaders, but God would choose to use him as the foundation of his new house, the church. Jesus is the solid, sound, and stable cornerstone that will be the foundational support for the church. Can you picture God as the architect? Placing Jesus as the cornerstone and then planning to use all of his chosen people to build his spiritual house. When we make Christ our foundation, when we put our hope in Christ, God will use us as living stones for his church. I like to imagine what else Peter might have been thinking while he was writing this. Remember, Peter was not his first name. We're introduced to him as Simon, and Jesus changes his name to Cephas or Peter. And then later we read in Matthew 16 that Jesus calls Peter the rock, the rock on which the church will be built. Hmm. Living stones, the rock, the foundation, the cornerstone, something to think about for sure. All this talk about buildings and church, though, can make me a little sad in this time of COVID-19. I miss the Lima Church building a lot. <laughs> I miss walking through those heavy front doors and being greeted by smiling faces. I miss sitting in the pews. Maybe you miss sitting in your pew. I'm looking at that beautiful stained glass window. I miss sitting at the round tables and chatting with my friends and drinking coffee that someone else made. I miss hearing the organ and the piano and the brass and the praise band, the choir. I miss the voices of singing in unison. I miss a lot of things. This is the building where we worship. Some of us have been here for our entire lives. It's become a place of comfort, of peace, of safety, and of joy. I found myself saying, I miss church. I'm sure many of you are nodding in agreement with me, right? It's so hard to feel like a church when we're apart. It's so hard to feel connected to each other when we can't be together. But Peter's words have really challenged me this week. His words remind us that we have been chosen by God to be the living stones in the same spiritual building. But that building isn't Lima United Methodist Church. It's the building of God. Peter says that God has chosen each of us to be a living stone that when we're combined with other living stones, create this spiritual space designed by God and built on the foundation of the living Christ. We are now the building blocks of the sanctuary, the new sanctuary, the sanctuary called the kingdom of God. In addition, we have been chosen by God to be priests in this holy kingdom. Traditionally, the priests did the work in the temple. They did the upkeep and the maintenance, the sacrificing and the praying. Now we have been chosen to do the work in the sanctuary that's built by God. We are the chosen caretakers of this sanctuary. We have been chosen to be the trustees, the prayer team, the outreach committee, the Bible study teachers, the musicians, and the worshipers in the sanctuary of God. If we think the sanctuary at Lima United Methodist Church can bring us comfort, peace, and joy, can you even imagine what the sanctuary of the kingdom of God can bring? And wow, we are all called to this vital and life-giving ministry. Lima United Methodist Church, the building may be closed. Worship and fellowship is not happening in those walls, but my friends, the church is not closed. God's sacred and spiritual building is never closed. 
In these times of storm and wind, fear and uncertainty, we have hope in the promise that God's holy sanctuary is built on the cornerstone of Jesus. We have hope because we have each been chosen to be part of this holy sanctuary. We have hope because each of us can seek comfort and safety and joy in the sanctuary of God. And we have hope because we are the stones in this holy sanctuary together. I love Psalm 133. It says, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. One of my favorite passages of scripture is John 17, 20 to 27. The title in my Bible says, Jesus prays for all believers. Just that by itself brings me comfort. Jesus prayed for us. He prayed for you and for me. He prayed that we would have unity, that we would come together with each other and with God. I think he was praying that we would never feel alone. Jesus's prayer is that we would never feel alone. Even though we may feel alone at times, my friends, we have the promise that we are not alone. Maybe we're not together in the same physical space. Maybe we can't gather in the place that we love. Maybe we're all dealing with this global pandemic in a different way. But we are not alone. We are united when we see the stars and the sun or the moon. We are united when we read scripture. We're united when we pray for each other. We're united when we love our neighbor with a phone call or a note. We are united when we donate food to the food bank. We're united when we sing the hymns of faith. We are united when we share our faith with others. In these challenging times, the church has the potential to act more unified than ever before. Maybe this is our chance to worship or sing or talk about Jesus when we're not in our brick and mortar building. Until we can come together again in the building that we love called Lima United Methodist Church. Until we can be together for worship in person, for fellowship and for laughter. We will all hope that it can be sooner rather than later, but safe. Until then, let us live in this truth. Our unity is not defined by our being together as Lima Church. Our unity is defined by our being together in God's church, together in God's sanctuary, in God's kingdom. We are chosen to be the living stones in this kingdom. We are chosen to be the workers in this kingdom. When we come together, we build on the foundation, the cornerstone, who is Jesus Christ. When we come together, we can live in the hope, in the promises of God's kingdom, that kingdom that is filled with comfort and safety and joy. And we can experience that kingdom on earth as we know and hope in the hope of heaven. In the name of Jesus, our cornerstone, amen. Let's now sing together with Mary King, the hymn, Our Hope is Built on Nothing Less. It's built on nothing less than Jesus Christ, our hope and our cornerstone.
Today is the United Methodist Native American Ministry Sunday. We'll collect an offering at a later time for this important ministry. But today I chose a Cherokee prayer as our blessing in honor and in unity on this special day. Please be blessed by these words. May the warm winds of heaven blow softly upon your house. May the great spirit bless all who enter there. May your moccasins make happy trails in many snows. And may the rainbow always touch your shoulder. Amen. <laughs>